March 14th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Numbers chapters 28 through 30 of the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to Moses, Command the Israelites, with regard to my offering, be sure to offer my food for my offering made by fire, as a pleasing aroma to me at its appointed time. You will say to them, This is the offering made by fire, which you must offer to the Lord. Two unblemished lambs, one year old, each day, for a continual burnt offering. The first lamb you must offer in the morning, and the second lamb you must offer in the late afternoon. With one-tenth of an ephah of finely ground flour as a grain offering mixed with one-quarter of a hin of pressed olive oil. It is a continual burnt offering that was instituted on Mount Sinai as a pleasing aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord. And its drink offering must be one quarter of a hin for each lamb. You must pour out the strong drink as a drink offering to the Lord in the holy place. And the second lamb you must offer in the late afternoon. Just as you offered the grain offering and drink offering in the morning, You must offer it as an offering made by fire, as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. On the Sabbath day, you must offer two unblemished lambs a year old, and two tenths of an ephah of finely ground flour as a grain offering mixed with olive oil along with its drink offering. This is the burnt offering for every Sabbath, besides the continual burnt offering and its drink offering. On the first day of each month, you must offer as a burnt offering to the Lord two young bulls, one ram, and seven unblemished lambs a year old, with three-tenths of an ephah of finely ground flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering for each bowl, and two-tenths of an ephah of finely ground flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering for the ram, and one-tenth of an ephah of finely ground flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering for each lamb, as a burnt offering for a pleasing aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord. For their drink offerings include half a hin of wine with each bowl, one third of a hin for the ram and one fourth of a hin for each lamb. This is the burnt offering for each month throughout the months of the year. And one male goat must be offered to the Lord as a purification offering in addition to the continual burnt offering and its drink offering. On the fourteenth day of the first month is the Lord's Passover, and on the fifteenth day of this month is the festival. For seven days bread made without yeast must be eaten, and on the first day there is to be a holy assembly, and you must do no ordinary work on it. But you must offer to the Lord an offering made by fire, a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram, and seven lambs one year old. They must all be unblemished. And their grain offering is to be a finely ground flour mixed with olive oil. For each bull you must offer three-tenths of an ephah and two-tenths for the ram. For each of the seven lambs you are to offer one-tenth of an ephah, as well as one goat for a purification offering to make atonement for you. You must offer these in addition to the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. In this manner, you must offer daily throughout the seven days the food of the sacrifice made by fire as a sweet aroma to the Lord. It is to be offered in addition to the continual burnt offering and its drink offering. On the seventh day, you are to have a holy assembly and you must do no regular work. Also on the day of the first fruits, when you bring a new grain offering to the Lord during your feast of weeks, you are to have a holy assembly. You must do no ordinary work, but you must offer as the burnt offering, as a sweet aroma to the Lord, two young bulls, one ram, seven lambs one year old, with their grain offering of finely ground flour, mixed with olive oil, three-tenths of an ephah for each bull, two-tenths for the one ram, with one-tenth for each of the seven lambs, as well as one male goat to make an atonement for you. You are to offer them with their drink offerings in addition to the continual burnt offering and its grain offering. They must be unblemished. On the first day of the seventh month, you are to hold a holy assembly. 
You must not do your ordinary work, for it is a day of blowing trumpets for you. You must offer a burnt offering as a sweet aroma to the Lord, one young bull, one ram, and seven lambs one year old without blemish. Their grain offering is to be a finely ground flour mixed with olive oil. Three tenths of an ephah for the bull, two tenths of an ephah for the ram, and one tenth for each of the seven lambs, with one male goat for a purification offering to make an atonement for you. This is in addition to the monthly burnt offering and its grain offering and the daily burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings as prescribed as a sweet aroma, a sacrifice made by fire to the Lord. On the tenth day of the seventh month, you are to have a holy assembly. You must humble yourselves. You must not do any work on it. But you must offer a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. One young bull, one ram, and seven lambs one year old, all of them without blemish. Their grain offering must be a finely ground flour mixed with olive oil, three-tenths of an ephah for the bull, two-tenths for the ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs, along with one male goat for a purification offering. In addition to the purification offering for atonement and the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you are to have a holy assembly. You must do no ordinary work, and you must keep a festival to the Lord for seven days. You must offer a burnt offering, an offering made by fire as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Thirteen young bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs each one year old, all of them without blemish. Their grain offering must be a finely ground flour mixed with olive oil three-tenths of an ephah for each of the thirteen bulls, two-tenths of an ephah for each of the two rams, and one-tenth for each of the fourteen lambs, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the second day you must offer twelve young bulls, two rams, fourteen lambs, one year old, all without blemish and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings. On the third day you must offer eleven bulls, two rams, fourteen lambs, one year old, all without blemish and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the fourth day you must offer ten bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs, one year old, all without blemish and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the fifth day you must offer nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs, one year old, all without blemish and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the sixth day you must offer eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs one year old, all without blemish and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, and for the rams and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the seventh day you must offer seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen lambs one year old, all without blemish 
and their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. On the eighth day you are to have a holy assembly. You must do no ordinary work on it. But you must offer a burnt offering, an offering made by fire as a pleasing aroma to the Lord, one bowl, one ram, seven lambs one year old, all of them without blemish. And with their grain offering and their drink offerings for the bowl, for the ram, and for the lambs according to their number as prescribed, along with one male goat for a purification offering, in addition to the continual burnt offerings with its grain offering and its drink offering. These things you must present to the Lord at your appointed times, in addition to your vows and your free will offerings as your burnt offerings, your grain offerings, your drink offerings, and your peace offerings. So Moses told the Israelites everything just as the Lord had commanded him. Moses told the leaders of the tribes concerning the Israelites, This is what the Lord has commanded. If a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath of binding obligation on himself, he must not break his word, but must do whatever he has promised. If a young woman who is still living in her father's house makes a vow to the Lord or places herself under an obligation, and her father hears of her vow or the obligation to which she has pledged herself, and her father remains silent about her, then all her vows will stand, and every obligation to which she has pledged herself will stand. But if her father overrules her when he hears about it, then none of her vows or her obligations which she has pledged for herself will stand, and the Lord will release her from it, because her father overruled her. And if she marries a husband while under a vow, or she uttered anything impulsively by which she has pledged herself, and her husband hears about it, but remains silent about her when he hears about it, then her vows will stand, and her obligations, which she has pledged for herself, will stand. But if when her husband hears it, he overrules her, then he will nullify the vow she has taken, and whatever she uttered impulsively, which she has pledged for herself, and the Lord will release her from it. But every vow of a widowed or of a divorced woman which she has pledged for herself will remain intact. If she made the vow in her husband's house or put herself under obligation with an oath and her husband heard about it but remained silent about her and did not overrule her, then all her vows will stand and every obligation which she pledged for herself will stand. But if her husband clearly nullifies them when he hears them, then whatever she says by way of vows or obligations will not stand. Her husband has made them void, and the Lord will release her from them. Any vow or sworn obligation that would bring affliction to her, her husband can confirm or nullify. But if her husband remains completely silent about her from day to day, he thus confirms all her vows or all her obligations which she is under. He confirms them because he remains silent about when he heard them. But if he should nullify them after he has heard them, then he will bear her iniquity. These are the statutes that the Lord commanded Moses relating to a man and his wife and a father and his young daughter who is still living in her father's house. God, I love thinking about The time back in the Old Testament when the temple was up and the sacrifices are happening, not only for forgiveness of sins, for atonement, but for all of these other issues, including uh, thankfulness uh, for all of your amazing blessings. They said that in a year's time, just for these required sacrifices, not the individual ones that people would bring, that they would go through 113 some odd bowls over a thousand and eighty lambs, one ton of flour, (laughs) a thousand bottles of oil, and a thousand bottles of wine. Oh my goodness, every year. (laughs) It's crazy. 
But my favorite part of, of all of these chapters is actually from the second verse of the very first chapter where you said, with regard to my offering, be sure to offer my food for my offering made by fire as a pleasing aroma to me at its appointed time. And I think that's something we need to remember today. Um, having to do in connection with our tithing. I've heard people have discussions, lively discussions about tithing all the time. Well, do I tithe pre-tax amount? Do I tithe after this is taken out? Do I tithe after I pay my bills? Do I tithe on gifts I get for my birthday? Do I tithe on uh, money that comes into my nonprofit? Uh, just all these, all these rules and regulations and what we fail to remember is the whole point of the tithing uh, first and foremost is just recognition of the thankfulness that you have given us everything that we have in life you have given to us thus the be sure to offer my food for my offering made by fire that's pleasing to me and so first and foremost i think we need to remember our incredible blessings that we have in this world every single thing that we have is yours including the money we have coming in and then part two of that is, is is with thankfulness out of that amazing blessing, just thankfulness for that blessing uh, that you've asked us to return 10% of that. Uh, you could ask us to return 90%. You would be rightfully doing so. You could ask us to return 110% and you'd be right in doing so. Uh, but you ask us uh, out of obedience to return 10% to you. And sometimes if you lead our heart to return more than 10%. And to follow that. So we have to remember the the reason behind the tithe. It's not just a law like the laws that we're reading about here. They weren't just so 113 bulls would be slaughtered every year. There was specific connotations, specific reasons, uh, specific processes uh, for every single one of these offerings. They weren't just gratuitous. And so our tithing shouldn't be done with grumbling. <laughs> our tithing shouldn't be done tight-fisted. Uh, our our tithing should be done with thankfulness that we even get to tithe to you, God. How incredible is that? And give back your own money to you. With the rest of this, all of these incredible festivals that they got to have back in the Old Testament, all intentionally recognizing you and, and what you had done for Israel. I just ask today, God, that you help me celebrate every little last thing that I see you doing in my life. Whether it's the amazing flowers that are starting to poke up out of the ground, uh, thinking it's springtime with some of these beautiful days we've been having. Um, that is that is all you. Or the gorgeous stars that are in the sky at nighttime when it is so crystal clear and chilly outside. And that is all you. Or when I get an opportunity to have a conversation with somebody and the doors just go flying open and I get to talk to them about you. That is all you. So let me remember to celebrate all of these amazing things that you do with me, for me, through me, throughout the day. Uh, we don't have all of these incredible festivals anymore like they did back in the Old Testament to be intentional about celebrating you and, and your relationship with us. So allow us today uh, to make little tiny celebrations out of all the amazing things, the amazing blessings that are in our life. Thank you for taking such amazing care of us, God. We love you very much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.